Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, beloved brothers and sisters. You're welcome to this beautiful uh, Sunday, the sixth Sunday after the Trinity. And the topic we're going to be looking at is love, not the world. Let us pray. Mighty Father, thank you for the gift of a new day and a new week. We trust, Lord, that your power will be made manifest upon us through this day. Uh, come through to us as we look into your word, which is the perfect law of liberty. Let it bring forth fruit in our lives, that at the end your name will be glorified and your children will be strengthened. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I said the topic is love, not the world. We'll be taking our test from 4 John chapter 2. We'll be reading from verse 8 through to 17. Well, join me to read. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you. Because the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. He who says he is in the light and hears his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness, and does not know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I write to you, little children, because of your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life, it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world is passing away, and the loss of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. We're looking at today, God is leaving us an instruction, an admonition, that we should not love the, the world. This morning, God is speaking to, to believers, even though we are in the world, but the instruction of heaven for us today, as we move on, is not to love the, the world. Now, the warning of not loving the world or the things in the world is directed to Christians as contained in our texts. This instruction is to Christians, is to believers. The unbelievers, have, there is nothing else they have. They have no choice but to love the world. But here God is speaking to us Christians that we should not love the world. John makes it clear that Christians should live differently and not according to the world standard. The world, according to this set, refers to evil, organized system under Satan, which operates through unbelievers who are God's enemy. You know, Romans chapter 8, verse 17, we're going to talk about the canon man uh, had no choice but to love the, the things of the world. Now, when God is talking about love, not the world, he's talking about that we should not pattern our lives after the standard of the world should not go with the wind that or the direction that the world the people of the world are going that we have to be different 
the pattern or the standard of the world should not be the yastic of our life. That is the instruction that God is leaving us. So it means that God is leaving, yes, expecting us as believers to be an example to, to the world. That we should not be carried away by the wagon of um, uh, effects of uh, uh, worldly pursuit, worldly thirst, worldly desire, worldly passion. That is the instruction. And I pray that every one of us should arise to this re reality because it's the expectation of God for us. And I pray we will not fail God in Jesus' name. He specifically mentioned the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life as the sinful things in the world which we Christians are to run from. Specifically, the word uh, goes after the loss of the flesh. They, they, they run after what pleases the flesh, what, man, what magnifies the flesh, what satisfies the flesh. God is saying we should not do that. We should not go in that way. The pride of life. Uh, in the world, the world is so self-centered. It's just about me, I, and myself. In the world, that is the pattern of the world. So God is asking us not to be self-serving that we should look out for the interests of the, the other people. So the pride of life should not be part of our personal pursuits, even though we are in the world. That is the expectation of God. And the Bible itself forbids worldliness for us as Christians. You are Christ's ambassadors. Why is Christ instructing us not to love the world? We are his ambassadors here on earth. We are his representatives. Our conduct and our dealings must reflect him, must bring glory to his name. Even though we live in the midst of darkness, God is expecting that the light of God will shine through us and banish every darkness around us. So we, we should not go the, the way of the world. We should not go uh, by the passion and the desire and the promptings of, of the world. We must arise to manifest the light of God wherever we find ourselves. We should not live to satisfy your lustful desires, which will only separate you from the love of God. If definitely, as God has instructed us not, not to love the world, if we love the world, it means that the love of the Father is not in us. There will be a separation, there will be a, a barrier between us and God. And when we call him, he will not answer us. So this is a critical matter that every one of us must take heed of. We are not to love the world because the way that will make us God's enemy. It is a terrible thing for a child of God to be an enemy of God. If, you, if the love of God is a love of the world is in us, it becomes God's enemy. And when you are God's enemy, we are, you are positioning yourself against the will of God, against God against the purpose of God. And God will not hear you when, when, when you call. God will not be, be with you. Where the presence of God will not be with you. And it is the presence of God that abides on a believer that makes a whole lot of difference in his life. So, loving the world positions us as God's and enemies. And I pray that will be uh, far off from us in Jesus' name. Sinful desires and other indulgences. Greedy is desires from, for material riches, and possessions of this world as well as self-advertisement are not part of our Christian heritage. They are of the world. And finally, these are the things that are so evident in the world that God is instructing us as we step out to today, as we go about our activities this way, God is instructing us specifically not to get involved in sensual sins because the world these days it says it's paraded every, everywhere even if you don't want to see it as you walk around the street you are is there beckoning wherever you turn to on television wherever it is is beckoning because it's saying we should not love the world also the issue of indulgences other indulgences doing drugs uh, <laughs> pornography, and all that. They are, they are things that are evident. And several Christians are being swayed by that. 
several Christians have been uh, attracted and trapped in, in all these indulgences. God is instruction, instructing that we must deliberately run away from them. Greedy desires for material riches. Today, people do all they can, whatever within their reach to, to be rich. People are going for wealth, no matter what they do. And Christians are not exempted from it. He said the end justifies the, 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 the means. The moment the money comes, I mean, every other thing will fall in place. But that is not so. There are Christian principles and Christian patterns for wealth, and we must apply ourselves to, to it. He said, these are not Christian heritage, and we must understand that if they are of the world. As a child of God, you are not supposed to be under the control of these things. Be determined to choose the pathway of godliness and righteousness. That is what is placed before us. If we love the world, if we go by the, the pattern of the world, it means that we are in, in, in conflict with the, the purpose of God. We cannot claim to be righteous and say we are persuaded, we are given, we are attracted to the patterns and principles of, of, the, of the world. Our life must be different. Our life must mirror Christ wherever we find ourselves. Wherever you are, whether you are a student, whether you are a business person, whether you are in the civil service, whether you are a politician, say, love not the world. Make sure you don't do things the way others do it. That is why you are a child of God. That is why God has said they are the light of the world. Wherever you go, darkness must give way. If you are a politician, play your politics according to the principles of God. Show forth Christ wherever you are. When you sit to, to discuss and deliberate on issues, reflect the purpose of, of God. Let the word of God rule your heart. Be there as an ambassador of Christ. That is why you are there, brother. That is why you are there. Show the, the difference wherever you are, in your family, in your neighborhood. Let people know of the truth that you are a child of God. Don't be carried away by uh, things that everybody is doing. If you do that, it means there is a problem. You are not re reflecting Christ. And God will not be happy with you. And I pray, God bringing this warning to us this today, means that there is something he wants to make out of our lives. And I pray we will arrive to, arrive to that reality in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, please deal with every lust of the flesh in my life. Mighty Father, arise, touch every life. Whatever it is that attracts your children to the world, banish it today in the name of Jesus. Set us free from the trappings and the hood of the devil that we reflect Christ wherever we find ourselves. Thank you because we know you have done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.